You know, son, I feel like we haven't been getting along recently. Shocking. And because of that, I thought I would take the opportunity for us to do something together to share a, a bonding experience. Uh-huh. You don't sound you don't sound really excited. But just wait until you hear. We're going to be going to an arcade. An arcade? But this isn't like 1991. There really there's no arcades anymore, Dad. Unless you go to like like Disney World or something. Nonsense, my boy. This arcade has got uh, plenty of good games like uh like pinball. Pinball. Okay, you regressed from 91 to like 85. Uh, that's pretty good, what's up? That's pretty good. Uh, pretty soon your teeth are gonna regress down your throat. What'd you say? Nothing, nothing. Anyway, uh, I thought I would show you these particular pinball machines are very, very, this is new age stuff, okay? If you notice over on the side, the police are- Wait, 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 wait. The, poli the police have nothing to do with pinball machines, Dad. Today they do, son. Look over to your right. Oh my god, Dad, those are pinball machines. What even is that? Well, it's a brand new pinball game, son. It's called Slap the Scumbag. Oh, wow, they made it pass. Son, pinball's a game where the balls are supposed to hit stuff. So, uh, I'm not gonna say that this, this course was made to be fair, right? You gotta talk to Gray about that. Oh my god, Dad, nobody made it through! Everybody's dead, even the police! And that, son, is the difference between a highway and a freeway. Hello, everybody, Grace Joe Blaze, we're back with more Beam NG Drive. Out here on the bridge to nowhere, there's always police and scumbags. It's actually really good because the scumbags kind of stay in their lanes, if you know what I mean, instead of all trying to crowd in one spot. And I thought to myself, what a perfect place for pinball. I've decided to take the spinners and kind of alternate them in different patterns, slowly growing closer toward the middle until inevitably someone is sad. The spinners all go from back to front, so the question remains, can someone make it through the course? They actually can. A few cars are fast enough to get through the bars of the spinners, and the bars of the spinners have been made to go in such a way that if a vehicle were fast enough, it would be possible. For every other vehicle, they're just gonna have to get lucky enough to get punted down the roadway until they hit the finish line. Going through this first, we have the red, white, and blue. It's the Bangle Brothers. They're wanted for using Roman candles to scare children off their lawn. Let's see how they do. So right over here, we have the New Zealand police. You don't really get to see the New Zealand police that much. Now you can see all three cars, like they are perfectly in line with one another. Look at how they just barely make it through all of my spinners right until the very end. Now right here is where things start to go south. Does it hurt to get hit by a gigantic spinner while you're moving about 90 miles an hour? Let's watch this dummy and find out. I feel like there's gonna be an impact right about there. Mmm. Yes. I'm pretty sure that would pulverize your internal organs. So, he definitely got hit by two different chunklets, and thus his vehicle gets the opportunity to fly further than it normally would. You're gonna notice the police car right over here making plays, going straight down the middle of the end zone. It's totally possible that the timing will be appropriate. And he will continue onward. Look at this. He's going for the pocket. You've never seen anything so glorious in all your life. When all of a sudden, right there, a big hit. Coming back to the other side. <laughs> I can't believe that three of the vehicles got wrecked together like this. Usually they all like go in different directions. Like I think the red truck is somewhere off into the left side stratosphere but the blue the white and the police vehicle made it all over here together that's kind of interesting and realistically there was only two more that they had to make it through channel sadness news about to do an interview with one of the drivers here today sir how do you feel oh this 
is cool. This guy's kind of doing a handstand. Only like his wrists are broken. So it's probably a little bit more painful than average. Now there's more stuff that you can do here. You can separate the trucks a little bit and things get a little more haywire. Let me show you what I mean. So what happens here is they're all moved apart a little bit. Now they're gonna start drifting toward the middle, but they don't drift enough. So they kind of get a little cut every now and again. Now you're gonna notice even with the impact, it wasn't that bad. This truck is still drivable. I mean, one of the tires is slightly derpy. This is true. Red truck, how are you feeling? <laughs> Not so good. Not so good. Come on, blue truck. I have faith in you. This blue truck's gonna make it. Look at this. It's got perfect timing. I told you right there. Little bit of a boost from the back. No big deal. It can still drive. I know it can. Another perfectly timed slide. Everyone in Fast and the Furious would be proud except for that guy. That guy right there wouldn't get the opportunity to be proud because he would be on fire. And dead. Blue vehicle. Still moving through. Will the timing be appropriated one more time? No, not at all. I think that we're gonna go for a swim. Right over the banister. Right over the guardrail. The blue car is out of here. Now the white vehicle, if you notice, had that timing correctly. Managed to get through most of the, all right, never mind. Maybe the timing wasn't as good as I thought it was. Oh, oh God, oh my. Yep. I, uh... I mean, I would sit here and say that they made it past all of the, uh... All of the pinball makers. But if you're hanging upside down on the bridge and you're on fire and your body is tangled up inside of the seat, can we really call it a victory? God, these spinners are great. Let us sit here for a moment and see what it's like to slowly turn into a gelatinous mass. Now, you're gonna notice that just barely this thing may kiss the edge of the spinner. How bad will it be? Pretty friggin' bad. Because we just got slammicated into the white car. Our dummy, not feeling too good. Let's take the opportunity to look at how his chicklets are doing. His chicklets are inside of the seat. That's, there we go, they just got knocked out. But now his hand is disembodied from the rest of his arm. This is not very humorous for him. Two of the trucks spinning heedlessly getting smashicated, the blue car still somehow moving on through, and the police are the last ones left. Everyone else has been obliterated. The red car is like literally bouncing between two of those things. It is absolutely awful. The blue vehicle just gets punted. That right there, folks, is a home run. Police car moving through doesn't have what it takes. No, it does not. Don't you worry, though. The Beam NG police know better than to just give up. Although technically, I guess it's the New Zealand police. Now, at this angle, I think that we may be going for a drink into the water. Yep, straight off, quadruple bajillion axle, Nancy Kerrigan style, and we're sitting at the bottom of the sea. But Gray, what happens if you put nukes in the back of the outside trucks? That's a horrible idea. Let's do it. So yeah, now we have nukes in the outside trucks. It's totally possible that when the spinners have even the slightest contact with these trucks, they will detonate in a spectacular fashion. That's amazing that nuke didn't go off. Typically these nukes go off with just about any jostling. Right there, that's some friggin' jostling. I can't believe, nope, <laughs> here goes the nuke. The nuke is annoyed. The nuke is not happy, and the trucks are paying the price. The red truck goes flying. It doesn't even have time to catch the roadway. It is just out of here. It looks like some of the uh, some of the backsplash from that nuke took the police. Oh, <laughs> lordy! These spinners cause damage, uh, the likes of which you don't often get to see especially with the dual crashing going on over there now the white truck is the last one left as it sometimes is but the question is how far can it get the blue truck is spinning down the middle of the road which means that it's going to do pretty far until it inevitably runs out of momentum from the beating it just had that's not good that's even worse 
So now the white truck has to deal with some sadness. Meanwhile, a scrap of the police truck is probably what's going to win this race. The blue truck is still trying valiantly. Technically, the blue truck wins because it's the only truck that's still on the roadway. It's totally possible that it'll even get a little bit further. It just matters if it can reach the next. Yeah, look at this. It's going to reach. That really sucks for the guy inside. Ugh. <laughs> well, I had mentioned that it was the only truck that was still on the roadway, but I guess not anymore. Maybe if we have even bigger, beefier trucks, they'll do better. And thus over here, we have the Biggins, brother. They're wanted for ordering the double meat option at Subway and not having the way to pay for it. Let's see how they do. Now these trucks over here are the drag racing style of this truck. So they can get up to speed pretty good. Now what's interesting is they're all kind of, uh... <laughs> I was gonna say... They're all kind of meandering over to the right side of the road. Now, they're all kind of sad. Well, since they all like to wander, I thought I would put them over to the to the left a little bit more. It seems to have helped a little bit. At least the red truck's gonna get through. Now, right over here, we're gonna get a trio of beatings. When I had said the red truck would make it through, I didn't think that it would die simply because the other trucks would smash into it. These things don't go very straight. Oh, lordy. Does have a lot of momentum from that hit, though. A lot of momentum from the hit. No rear axle. Not like it really needs it. As long as it stays on the bridge and it continues to get fed through the course, it counts, after all. It counts. Manages to go over the spinner with the greatest of ease. That sort of vehicular acrobatics is exactly what the BeamNG police is looking for. Right over here. Another beating from the top side. The dummy got a direct hit right there. His cranium is probably cracked into a billion pieces and the truck goes flying over the guardrail. No, the truck is saved by its own tenacity as the frame is slowly peeled from the body like an overripe tangerine. I was wrong. It completely let go of the guardrail. And I guess the fire is going to get put out in the ocean now. All right, I moved him over a little bit more. Uh, kind of looked like it helped. Maybe not. Maybe not totally. You know what I could also do? I could probably stagger them timed-wise so that they hit at different intervals. That's a bad hit. I don't know where the engine is right now, but I doubt it's still in the car. Oh, look at the police vehicle trying to get through. This is amazing. What a takedown. The front grill finally gets put to good use as it absolutely obliterates the blue car and then in turn gets obliterated by the spinner. The blue car still moving down the roadway. The police car gets a boost from the spinner. Let's see how far it'll drag. Come on, baby, just stay on the roadway. Stay on the roadway. The dummy is trying to leave. He doesn't want to be a part of the competition any longer, but his truck does. His truck remaining. The truck still driving somehow, getting a couple of face slaps. That was a backhand chop right across the chicklets by the spinner. And I think right over here, the Border Patrol comes to rest. And this is probably the furthest that we've seen them get. So this is bad. Half of the dummy is in one side. Half of the dummy is in the other side. But this is a solid piece of metal. How did this happen? All right, we've got some stagger going on now. Let's check it out from the dash cam. The dash cam looking good. The red truck, probably the one that's going to get the furthest. Now you can see the white truck seems to have gotten past the beating. The blue truck did not make it past the beating. The police car did make it past the beating. Wow, that is just a fiery ball of wreckage. The white car stopped it. I've never seen this. It stopped the spinner. Oh, I think that the spinner is going once again. If nothing else, then through the sheer power and will of the police vehicle. Here we go. This is perfect. This is perfect. The speed and agility is exactly what we want to see. No! Smash from the side and off it go. Wait! I think we're going to count it. Yep, we can count it. Right over here, this red vehicle has now gotten the furthest of all of my large trucks. Let's go with something super fast and see if it changes the outcome. It's time to go fast really fast. It's the Blazing Brothers. They're wanted for 
grand theft in the amount of $420. Let's see how they do. Oh, wow. <laughs> These cars go really fast. They will get up to nearly 300 miles an hour right now all of the vehicles managing to make it through the spinners. Now they should, because they're so fast and they're so slender that realistically there's not a lot of space for them to take hits. You're gonna notice right over here, the police just behind the lead car. The various spinners kinda, oh, something happened back there and the game just crashed. Okay, the game's working again. Uh, I'll just have to pretend that the red one got abducted by aliens or something. Now, if these two cars touch, it may be really bad. Let's see if they can squeak on by. I'm not gonna call that a squeak. And right there is a heavy, high-speed impact. But the police car of all cars has managed to find the speed and... Hold on now, as long as it doesn't kill my Stigs. The Stigs have a lot of shrapnel coming at them. It's totally possible that they may get whacked by a tire or a, a piece of the exhaust or something. But no, the Stigs look okay. The bumper manages to miss. And our police car is the winner somehow. The speed did matter. It made it past all the spinners. Could it do it again? We're watching this police car one more time. All three vehicles. Ooh. Oh God, oh that's bad. That spinner's not moving for some reason and it's causing a lot of agony. It was just like a double backbreaker. It's moving again now because the cars were smashed through the spinner at about 150 miles an hour. Now the police car manages just barely to brush on by. It depends on how well it can continue to maintain its trajectory. The white vehicle as well is in an area where it's not going to get hit by either of the spinners. So right over here, time is not on the police's side, yet it is on the white vehicle side. The white vehicle now moving down the roadway, getting smashed to the side. Can it hang on before it? Oh, it did hang on because it's so low to the ground and it got tossed in the air. This is like a volleyball pass or something like that. When this thing lands, it ain't gonna be good. One more hit, okay, two more hits. It made it past. And it killed my Stigs! The white vehicle makes it past and slays the father and son Stig duo. Also, the driver is... I... It doesn't even look like a, like a body anymore. It just kind of looks like some sort of Jenga project gone wrong. Anyway, folks, that's going to be it for this episode of Beam NG Drive, where we finally got to play some vehicular ping pong. And the vehicular ping pong was really good. Oh, the white car, the white car makes it straight through. I can't believe it, the blue car as well and everyone else gets obliterated until the next time, folks. Stay foxy and much love.